Uh, our next presentation is by Dr. Dr. Dedong Wang of Australia's CSRO, talking automated eyes for better fisheries management. Hi, my name is Dedong Wang from CSRO Australia. I will present our software Wonder, an AR-based web portal for automated EM video analysis. I will first briefly introduce myself, our team, and CSR, then present our current work and achievements, followed by the challenges we are facing and our future work. Our marine video technology team was formed in 2016, including members from CSR Data 61 and CSR Ocean Atmosphere. I'm a principal research scientist and a team leader in imaging and computer vision group of Data61. Rich and Jeff are also principal research scientists. They are from CSR Ocean and Atmosphere. Other team members include computer vision and AR research scientists, postdocs, software engineers, and a BD manager. Our collaborators include government agencies and also industry partners. CSRO is Australia's national science agency. We have about 5,500 people working with over 2,800 industry partners. CSRO is top 1% of global research agencies. We are based at 55 sites across Australia and the world. The main functions of WANDA include fish detection, fish species identification, and tracking based catch counting. This slide shows the pipeline of deep learning based EM video analysis. RGB videos are input of fish detection and classification machine learning model. The detection results are used as input of deep learning based tracking to count how many fish being caught for each species. Here are some quantitative results from our test videos. You can say we got some very promising results for some species with plenty of training images. However, the results do not look as good for some species for which we don't have enough training images. In summary, we have achieved a precision of close to 90% and a recall of 80-80%. Here are some highlights of WANDA. The catch event function can be used to detect catch events in a video so that a EM observer can be directed to the video segments that have fish instead of looking for fish in a video manually. This will save the video review time. The fish detection and species identification function can be used to assist EM observers with species identification. The automated counting and reporting function can be used to generate catch report for a trip. The auditing function can be used to review automatically identified fish species and correct any errors if found. Here is an example web page of the Wonder web portal. It shows a snapshot of video frame where a catch was detected and a short video clip showing the moment the fish was caught. A summary of the catch for the trip is shown at the bottom. Any errors from the automated fish detection species identification can be corrected manually. Trip reports can be downloaded as an Excel spreadsheet or a PDF file. This is a demo showing automated fish detection species identification and fish cutting from a video captured from a sorting tray.
This slide shows another relevant project we did. It's called Boat to Plate. It was designed to capture vessel level data, including species, fish size, capture date and the time location for automated fish origin information collection and the fish tagging for supply chain management. Information of the fish origin can be retrieved by scanning the fish tag as shown at the right hand side, including species, size, color, fisheries, boat name, capture location, date time, and storage temperature. So what are the challenges we are facing and what we will do next? First, the inconsistent video quality is a headache. This is caused by movement of the boat, our controlled video background, and the lighting conditions in rough seas. Second, not enough training images for rare species. Third, how to generalize a machine learning model trained with video data from several fishing trips to other trips of the same vessel? How to generalize a machine learning model to multiple vessels? How to generalize a machine learning model trained with video data captured from one fishery to other fisheries? Thank you very much. Any questions? Thank you, Dugong. Thanks for sharing the story of CSRO's work, and there's a lot in it. And uh, developing automated solutions to help manage large scale fisheries is a large challenge, but as we can see, it's progressing really quickly. Um, we've heard from other people speaking about the challenges they have that actually the breakthroughs happening in technology are being held back just by the simple cleanliness of a camera lens and such like. There seems to be more breakthrough in the work of of coding to understand the pictures than, than just collecting the pictures in a useful manner. Can you give us a little bit of a background story about some of the challenges that you've had in, in, in formulating your ideas and, and where they've maybe shifted once you've, once you've gone operation? A little bit like we just heard from Jennifer where they started to monitor more the way people moved on a boat to understand if there was a catch event or not and, and looked at things like baited or unbaited hooks. Was there any surprises for you or any breakthroughs that came through along your journey? Yes, we started this work from uh, 2016, actually you come up with a very nice idea from uh, um, Jeff and Rich because uh, they found there are lots of data, tons of data sitting there. We need to do something about it. And uh, then we just come together for this form, this team initially start to uh, find a solution how to reduce eight hours video to eight minutes. That means how you can make sure uh, EM observers are looking at fish instead of doing fast forwarding to try to find the fish. You actually find nothing there in one hour piece of uh, video. So that's the first thing we did. Well, how to detect the key frame, it detects the fishing event. That uh, we got uh, some uh, very good result for that. That, uh, you know, figure some other nice ideas. Uh, so now we, um, you know, come to uh, use uh, deep learning to identify uh, uh, species. And with that, we found also lots of challenge. Initially, we got some very nice video, good quality, worked perfectly, we, are, we were so excited. But later on, when we got more fish trips video, we found uh, different stories quite different because uh, some videos with, uh, you know, lots of blurry because of movement of boat and some video come with uh, water drops because, you know, in rough state condition, camera lens being blocked by water drops, nobody clean that. And uh, we found eventually this is not as simple as we thought. And uh, also, you know, the videos recorded day and night and also sometimes it's, it's really, it was rainy, sometimes, sometimes it was sunny, also sometimes time cloudy and uh, video quality are quite different from one boat to another, you know, also species from one fishery to another fishery, quite different. That's just, we found a lot, a lot of uh, problem we need to deal with. That's, that's why it takes so long. And, um, but still we put a list or try to resolve them one by one. So I'll list some uh, challenges on my last, second last start, uh, slide. 
And uh, later we find, uh, you know, as I mentioned, how to generalize generalize a machine learning model from uh, you train by using several trips of data to all trips for the same boat. Because different boats have a different background. And even the same boat, sometimes the deck can be very bloody, also blood, right? If you could imagine. And uh, sometimes very clean, sometimes with lots of water, sometimes bloody. Just make these things very hard. And uh, so we are currently working on how to generalize machine learning model for the same boat, then next for the from different boats, then from one fishery to more fisheries. So lots of stories to tell, but uh, that's that's a quick summary. Yeah. Well, no, that's that's exactly the kind of story that gives people the insight into the challenges and where they are and how many there are, and and, and it's great to hear a repeated story about the need for you know, train data for rarer species. And that might be a great opportunity for collaboration across the international community to build up those data sets for the rarer species. And we're gonna go into deep water sharks soon. That's always our problem. We just don't see enough to, to, to get people aware of what species they might be. So Matt, do you have anything to add to this one? Um, yeah, uh, it's, so, it's always a challenge, isn't it, having uh... Uh, a sort of a theoretical idea and then trying to actually get it to work in a marine environment it's to, got to be one of the toughest environments to try and get anything to work uh, uh, alongside outer space I think uh, you know the equipment breaks and the, the salt water corrodes everything let alone the you know the conditions changing and trying to do some machine learning is a challenge isn't it and I think uh, also uh, alongside the deep water sharks that Kim mentioned uh, there are also other options for, for gathering biometric data, um, such as using stereo cameras and, and depth maps, um, depth cues, and also perhaps um, other frequencies like the infrared end of the spectrum, which might give a, a specific set of information that we don't normally look at, which is how myself and Gianpaolo Coro approach the um, Udimos uh, uh, algorithms to uh, to side fish, uh, which works quite well. Um, so I think, again, it's a sort of thinking outside the box uh, scenario there. So it's going to be interesting to see what's available for use inside and outside of CSRO, because obviously there's a lot of commercial and confidence development there. Rich and, and Jeff, have you got any comment on this point? How do you see the community being able to learn from CSIROs? Um, developments. A comment on that. I'm going to type in a question to the to the Q and A. Yeah, I, I mean, I think what Rich is about to answer that, that question in the in the question in the chat there. Yeah, but, well, maybe we'll we'll get to these kind of questions on governance yeah. and data management and stuff sharing later on. So thank you very much, the Dong and the team at CSIRO, for sharing your stories.